Give the Lord a shout. It's my honor to be here this evening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma. It's a privilege to, to have you here. Are you expectant? Then lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Father from the depths of your heart. He said to Moses, he said, there is a place by my side, by the cleft of the rock. He said, I will hide you there and I will cause all my goodness to pass by you. There are places in the spirit that men must journey into in order to touch the weight of glory that was allocated as a portion to humankind. It's important for us to realize that before the project of man was, was enacted by God, there were many projects that he accomplished. If you look into the angelic realm, there are different creatures in heaven. There are different spirits. Not every spirit in heaven is a messenger. There are some spirits in Zion that are elders. What they do is that they participate in court sessions in heaven and they determine the outcomes of generations and civilizations that are created afterwards. You know, John said, I was carried in the spirit and an, a strong agent proclaimed with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereon? He said, no man was found worthy. Neither to open the book nor to lose the seal. Now, that was the realm of the angelic. They didn't understand the breaking news that was coming from Zion. And while John was in the heights of the heavens, he was weeping profusely. Until he said, one of the elders came unto me. These ones are not angels. They are not messengers. They are elders in the council of God. They participate with God in determining the outcome of creation. He said, one of the elders said to me, he said, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed. So there are places in God, and the beauty of life is the fact that we have been given access, unending access, uncheckered access, to explore the realm of God and to tap into dimensions that were hidden from mortals. If a man can journey beyond time, he will look upon sacred things and those things are the things that give us power in the earth realm. You know, we want to discuss the subject of compelling power. It's not theology. It is life in the spirit. Can you talk to the Lord? I pray that God grant us height tonight. Manu rahavaka sesele haniyano mena Valila sefanati kori Elalone mahadiva hada Erina Takova Jadadane Lakido Sesai Brada Ganone Lahadiata Yaronaya Bantakido Barakadia Sadak Verone Haliangata Dali Lakude Fahadia Dona Ajatan de Limanaka Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Don't be left behind in this service. Ha ha. We are not a man. I am no man. I have no lada. I release. Hi, oh my God. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Moriana Fagus, in the name of Jesus. You see, before I begin to ascend, let me. There's something God wants to do before I begin to ascend. There are 12 men here that are gatekeepers. You see, there is a new sound in heaven. We are no longer functioning just by prophetic utterances. Angels are being released from Zion to announce seasons upon the face of the earth. And men who have understanding and ear in the spirit, 
they can hear the sounds of the spirit. Strange things are about to begin to happen on the face of the earth. Entities are beginning to visit this realm. That's why the energy level in the spirit is changing. For those of you who can journey, you know. Ah, there are 12 men who are gatekeepers. Before I begin to journey, the hand of God will come upon them. Ah, farther from the left to the right, from the front to the back, to the overflow. <laughs> I release the sounds of the heavens. The sound of creation, Shakaina is here. I release the sounds of Yeshua, the sounds of creation, Shakaina is here. We cry, Holy, 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 unto Yeshua, Shakaina is here. We cry, Holy, Holy. the time. I will need to touch this man. And so Father in the name of the Lord Jesus every one of them that you have ordained for this moment watch us in the spirit. Men that will ascend into the dimensions of the eagle. From the left to the right, from the front to the back, to all the overflows Holy Ghost, touch them. Operation. It's not emotional. Find those twelve. Bring them here quickly. I release the sounds of the heavens, the sounds of Yeshua. I release. The sounds of Yeshua, the sounds of creation. Yahweh. Most of the time, it's not those who are oriented with church life. You may see strange men come from the beer panel, strangely looking, knowing nothing about God, but the hand of God will come upon them. It will not be for the religious folks. They are you. They know what happened. <laughs> you know, God told me not to ascend first because there are those who are used to the melody. There are those who are used to the fire. There are those who are used to the gesticulation. There are those who have even heard our messages. So they are waiting for us to enter the utterance. So they will relate with the utterance mentally. Say, no, no, I said. Heavens, 
to push but uh, Japheth have Japheth have brought technology he has brought technology there's somebody the hand of God there's an oil coming on your head huh. see when we shift when we shift hey, many things happen on their own accord there are some people that will start running now ushers please watch them there is a garment of an evangelist Rocket evangelist of power about to descend in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now I provoke that dimension from where they are sitting. Just make sure they don't injure themselves. name in the precious name of Jesus I want to discuss a subject that a very large portion of the move of God and the fulfillment of his agenda depends on if you begin to study the subject of God you discover there are many dimensions in God and you see if it were not for the fall the primary preoccupation of man would have been the study of God. The exploration of divinity. And the reason is because <laughs> there are so many movements in the spirit. You see, somebody has been plagued with death. The spirit of death have haunted the family again and again and again. And it's through sickness. From what I'm hearing, it has to do with liver and death. Death has taken over three people from the family. And this person has been in, in confusion. If I ascend, I can tell where the person is in the hall. But I'm trying to avoid that. God wants to anoint you for healing because you've cried for, for power. I'm hearing the person's voice in the spirit. It's like there's a scream in the spirit. As this power rests on the person, it provoked Something like a shout in the spirit because it came suddenly. It's an oil of healing. Father, whoever that person. Okay, let me teach. As I'm teaching, the anointing will come on the person. The reason the pursuit of God would have been our preoccupation is because. The mystery that govern our age necessitates it. I've taught before, and like I've mentioned, if you go to heaven, angels are in different cadres, and there are different kinds of creatures in heaven. And the reason is because the creatures you see in heaven, they are actually like the senate that represents their dispensation. You know, the Bible said, when our age is completed. He said, men will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and they will come to salute Abraham in the kingdom of God. 
So the elders that ran the race in our generation, like Paul said, they remained for me a crown of life. These ones will not just be in the new Jerusalem. They will be in divine assembly as a testimony that once upon a time in the history of God, he created a species of being called men. It is on account of those creatures that you know about angels. It's on account of that kind of senate in Zion that you know about the four living creatures. It is on account of that kind of senate that you know about the eldership that sits upon the 20 and 4 thrones. Now, the, every creation, creation that God perfected, there was a mystery that governs them. And I don't have time to begin to explain from scripture the mystery that governed the creation of the, the creation of the angelic realm. But if you study man carefully, you'll discover the mystery that governed the creation of man is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what God did in creating our own reality, our own creation, was that he decided to architect the protocol of man in such that he hid himself in dust. So the Bible said, God said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. And he said, in the image of him, he created man. The word is bara. So man was not actually made of things. Man came out of God. Because bara means to be made out of nothing. So the project of man's creation was completed when God took man out of himself. But in order for man to function in this realm, God had to hinge it on a code and on a mystery. So the Bible said in John 2, 7, that God went to the dust of the ground. And when he gathered the dust together, he put the spirit that he took from his belly inside the dust. And the reaction that took place between that spirit and the dust produced what we call a soul. They said man became a living soul. So the preoccupation of the soulish realm and the personality of man is to study that being that dwells on his inside. So in John chapter 17 verse 3, Jesus said, this is life eternal. So long as you live in this realm, what I call life is not breath. It is your ability to interact with the dimension that I hid on your inside. So a man who has not journeyed to touch the God that is on his inside has not begun to live because the code of our realm is your ability to make contact with him that dwells on your inside. This is life eternal. That's why if a man has not found God, he has not begun to live. I release the sound of the heaven, the sound of creation. Shekinah is here. The sound of creation, the sound of Yeshua. Shekinah is here. Holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. Yahweh, Yahweh, hey, 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 Yahweh, Yahweh, hey. I was ministering in Calabar on Sunday. Prepared myself and I came on the platform. And I began to speak. After 10 minutes, an unction came upon me. And the moment it came on me, it I became completely weak, as if energy left my body. The way people are slain, that would have fallen on the altar. So, what naturally would happen to those listening to me began to happen to me. And my legs became heavy. I couldn't move. I said, What's going on? I held the puppet. I almost fell on the water. I leaned on my knee. What is happening to me? What is happening? And the brother saw a vision. He saw that the Lord Jesus came out of the wall and entered me. And when he entered me, he took my old nature and carried it with him. Instantly, energy left me. And for four days, I was paralyzed. I couldn't move. I just lie on the bed. I stand up in the morning. I can't stand. In that meeting, when it happened, I had to hold my brother and I said, demons go, demons go. I couldn't even pray for the sick. Meanwhile, over 40 persons were healed instantly. Growth vanishing from their bodies, all kinds of things happening. But what happened in the meeting was another layer of the God on my inside decided to manifest. And for more than one week, I've not understood it. So for me to understand and interpret the secret of my next level, I need to know what has happened to me because life in this realm 
is your ability to know the movements of the spirit on your inside. You know, when we talk power in our generation, it has been reduced to psychology. There is a, a depth in God you will journey to. You will become a God in the realm of demons. And when you see sick people, the moment you come, they know. They say, Jesus we know, Paul we know. It's not psychology. You enter, as you enter a place, demons on their own We recognize where you are coming from. But you see, because we lack power, we can't do anything that has to do with divine agenda. It's psychology. How many people can you manipulate? How many people? Even if you succeed in manipulating people in your locality, it's your ministry to your locality alone. What do you now do when you interact with people of different culture? Your ministry will end. The only thing that defies every contrary force is power. Let me do a teaching. If I continue like this, I mean. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Japheth wants me to talk on the compelling power. So <laughs> let's come down. Five minutes to the end of the meeting. He said, And the Lord said unto the servant. Now, Jesus was telling them a parable. He had prepared a banquet. And then he had invited the nobles. But you see, the nobles failed to come. See, that's what happens when the move of God begins. When the move of God begins, most times, some people think they are qualified. They know the atmosphere. They know the doctrine. They know the exegesis. So they sit down as the nobles. So they cannot interpret the strange things that God is doing. They want to judge spiritual occurrences from their mind. And it disqualifies them. When Jesus invited the nobles, they refused to show up. Did you not read in scriptures? The Sanhedrin had been watching the prophecy of Isaiah for 800 years. But when Jesus came, they did not see him. They were disqualified. They are the nobles. They refused to show up. They gave flimsy excuses. And Jesus now said, okay, since the nobles can't come, go to the street. And then they invited people from the street. Yet there was still room. Because the move of God is bogus enough to accommodate every one of us. In the day of the move of God, there's no room for jealousy. Because the usher will raise the dead. The pastor will be talking. The guy at the door will raise cripples. And it's not a strange thing. Everybody becomes a carrier of Jesus Christ in ever increasing intensity. So there was room. And because of the excess room that was available, he now said, go into the highway and compel, compel, compel them to come into the banquet. The word is anakazo. It is a kind of power that defies cultural difference. It's a kind of power that undermines intellectual, intellectual prowess. It's a dimension of power that has no regard for a difference. So you may see a boy of 15 years, and when an Akazo comes upon him, he will come to the street corner and he will cry. Ah. And even the elder and the young, regardless of demographic, we journey there. He said, when God came upon John, he didn't go to the synagogue. If he went to the synagogue, naturally he will meet people that fear God. He went into the wilderness. And right there in the wilderness, all he did was cry. And suddenly, he said, the whole of Jerusalem and Judea went to him. It's called power evangelism. If there is no power, we are talking. We are jesting. We are joking. We cannot contend with the spirits of the age. We cannot contend with the territorial spirits. We cannot bring deliverance unto Jacob until a power comes upon us. This is beyond psychology. Psychology will work for a group of people part time, but it cannot affect everybody. When you hear that the whole of Jerusalem and Judea went to him, there was something at work in his life. It's called an akazo. That's why when I want to move in the spirit, I say off every sound. If it's not working, it's not working. Because people can hear sound and fall down. How about the man who is deaf? The compelling power. Oh. In Psalm 66 verse 3, it says, say unto the Lord, 
how terrible are thy works that's the kind of power we are talking about he said through the greatness of thy power thy enemies submit themselves to you they were not advised they won't hear it they were not motivated they won't hear it they were not manipulated they won't hear it the only thing that will cause them to come on their knee and to worship him before the cross is through the greatness of his power he said through the magnitude of thy power thy enemies had no choice see they tried other alternatives it didn't work when God begins to move they come with gossip and then the power is too strong and then you graduate from gossip and then they go with negative expectations and prophecies it will soon fail don't worry and then you go beyond it and then they come with direct confrontation and persecution and then you still go when everything is done and dusted and it doesn't work then they come to you and say I celebrate you <laughs> I celebrate you <laughs> through the greatness it's not English language that takes men there it is something in God called power he said in Exodus 3 20 I will strike the whole of Egypt with my signs and with my wonder then he will let you go nothing moves until power is released that's why i said the gospel is not excellency of speech he said when i came unto you declaring the counsel of god i did not come with excellency of speech i came with the demonstration of spirit and power if it is divine agenda the number one thing is power if power have not manifested, the compelling force will not be there. They will hear you. They will enjoy your message. They will still go back doing what they are doing. The Bible said when David became mighty in God, he said daily men joined themselves to David until his host became like the host of God. His host, that was a man. His host became like the host of God. Who was David? A boy in a family of eight that was forgotten. When God came to the family through the prophet, they didn't think he was worthy. They looked at him, they said, no, if God wants to use everybody, it can't be David. David doesn't look like it. Eliab had stature. They had different credentials. David had no credential. He was in the backside of the woods. But when the time came, he was the one God nominated. And when that power came on him, whether he was educated, it was not a factor. Whether he was popular, it was not a factor. Whether he was learned, it was not a factor. Power was the foundation of reality. And when Saul wanted to kill him, David did not run looking for fraternity. He was in a cave called Adulam. And to make things worse, it was not soldiers that came to David. I thought the troop he commanded in the army of Saul will come to support him. They neglected him. He said 400 broken and battered men who were in debt. 400 broken and battered men who were in debt. These were the kind of men that came to David. But when David saw them, he knew what made him. And if I can introduce them to what made me, they will become like me. And a point came, 400 broken and battered men. The Bible said, and Adoni, who was of the Tacomite, one of the first three in rank, he said he took a spear and he slew 800 men. How can a broken and battered man take such feet? Something had entered him. Something had entered him. Because the power we talk about is not psychology. The power we talk about is not philosophy. The power we talk about is not sociology. It's the power of God. Something came upon him. He said, Eliezer, the son of Dodo, once upon a time, Israel was fighting to defend the land. And he said, the whole army of Israel ran. But he stood his ground. A point came, one of them was stronger than an army. So you now discover when power comes, number is not consequential. It is stature that matters. The men standing, what do they carry? I'm not talking about a system where people... Let me leave that one. <laughs> when I talk the subject of power, I talk it passionately. Because I did religious Christianity for a long time. Until in five years, six people died in my house. 
five years and now discover power is not English language. I discover power is not title. It's better not to have a title and have power than to have titles without power. The demon will make a mess. Six people died in five years. What was going on? I realized there was something lacking. The day power came, the gate was shut. You look at yourself, you say, I don't look like. Forget it. Look alike is not power. It's not power. Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. The disciples were with Jesus for three and a half years. Jesus trained them. They knew how to lay hands. They knew how to lay legs. But it was different from power. It's not how hands are laid. It's not how legs are laid. It is what backs the action that matters. And the point came when they were threatened. They knew they needed power. So they prayed for empowerment. That's what we change this world. Forget this complex English language talking. Forget this packaging without power. I'm not against excellence. Come on, take a look at me. But without power, you are naked. No matter how well arrayed you are, without power, you are naked. It may not be obvious to men, but in the spirit, it's very obvious. Every spirit we know. Because when you speak in the spirit realm, the first thing they say is, by whose authority? By whose authority? Who told you you can do what you are doing by talking? How dare you? Do you know the realm you are talking to? This is a realm of thrones. This is a realm of princes. This is a realm of dominion. This is a realm of power. Who told you you can read a textbook and come to give command here? By whose authority have you come? There must be something backing you up. And until you can touch that realm, you can shake nothing on ground. Job 28 verse 9, he said he put his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountains by the road. That's power. That's the power that compels. They sent men to arrest Jesus. They came. And Jesus was talking normal. He didn't even know people came. And they went back and said, no man ever speak like that man. There was a, a power that arrested them. And they went back. They would rather disobey their superiors than dare touch that stranger. They would rather disobey their pastors than dare touch that stranger. That's the subject we have come to consider. And if you know that this is one of the cardinal ingredients for advancing the kingdom in the last day, then you have to pay attention. Because I want to show you three secrets that govern the operation of power. That's what I came to do this evening. If I show it to you, I will sit down here and I will be talking and things will happen. It's a definite. We must understand that Christianity must be practiced. It must be practiced. This is not a fluke. That happens once and don't happen the next time. This is reality that can be replicated over and over and over again. If you know how to tap into it. Yahweh. Yahweh hey, hey. Yahweh Yahweh hey, hey. Hey, hey. I release the sounds of the heavens the sound, sound of Yeshua Shakai I release the sounds of the heavens, the sounds of creation. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. to 
what real power the power that compels the first thing that governs it is an encounter with Jesus encounter with Jesus is the doorway to power a man who has no encounter with the Lord will end up speaking English language and he will speak it for a long time the indicator and the alarm system that will reveal to you how helpless you are are the circumstances of life every time a man is to be revealed to himself every time the weakness and the helplessness of a man is to be revealed the alarm that makes that happen are the circumstances of life and at the same time the ingredients for announcing a man are still the circumstances of life so the platform for manifestation in this realm is not the pulpit they are the circumstances of life crisis is the platform for manifestation but the question is what type of manifestation will men see is it defeat or triumph the key is power every time a man is to step into another pedestal a crisis confronts him the doorway into that realm is the power that he can command but if there is no power then you now see how helpless you are let me tell you something the things the devil the things the devil throw at us are actually opportunities for us to manifest power but when you see a thousand and one Christians running and looking for help is a testimony of the depravity of power that is found among the Christian civilization the day power comes everything the devil himself will advise himself to stop the Bible said in Acts chapter 5 verse 15 that they put they that were maimed and sick by the roadside that by all means as Peter comes out of the place of prayer that is shadow he shadow there's no way you would have known that shadows heal the sick except as a man carried power every time power is present crisis of life becomes an avenue for manifestation the reason why the crisis of life brings men down is because of a lack of power so if you want to bring a cure to the crisis of life your pursuit should be an encounter with Jesus he said in John chapter 1 from verse 11 he came unto his own and his own they knew him not he came to the world although the world was made by him but the world received him not he said but as many as received him to them he gave the power the right the authority to become the sons of God and he didn't use the word sons because he didn't have many words to use he used the word sons because in kingdom context only sons advance government a child of God have access to plenty and abundance but government is not for children government is for sons government is for grown up that's why in Galatians 4 1 he said the heir so long as he's a child different nothing from a servant though he be lord of all so he places him under tutors and governors there are two things you need to know when you have the life of God you are the child of God but when you begin to encounter God you transform to become the son of God that's a man who can handle power sonship is not based on bet sonship is based on encounter he said we all with open faces beholding as in the glass the image of the Lord we are changed into that image from glory to glory in 1st John chapter 3 verse 1 he said when we shall see him we shall be like him many have no encounter with the Lord that's why they are helpless are they the children of God yes but how many times have they beheld him how many times have they encountered him this is not religion this is why people are psyched they think this thing is just a child's play. You shout and it's done. And they go to relax. When crisis comes, it reveals to them that they are still babes. Power is a function of encounter. If you have no encounter with the Lord, you have no power. Because the more you see him, the more you become like him. That's what made Adam to rule in the garden. The Bible said in Genesis 3 verse 8, it said in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking came walking and the more Adam saw that voice the more Adam ruled from that realm the things Adam did you can't imagine it that's the first Adam what he did was unimaginable it was Adam that when Adam was literally functioning as a god on the face of the earth it was the fall of Adam that necessitated Romans chapter 8 verse 19 he said the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God because when creation looked at Adam what they saw was glory 
When he said, let us make him in our own image and like the, the word nature is the word glory. So Adam was an emitter of the glory of God. So when the birds look at him, they see God. When trees, if Adam passes close to a tree, he increases the lifespan of that tree. The mosquitoes came to Adam to sing songs of worship because of what he carried. Adam could sit in Eden and command the galaxies and the constellation. Every manifestation you see before the coming of Jesus Christ were packets of things Adam did. He was Adam that brought that witness to the face of the earth. If Joshua could tell the sun to stand, it's because it was captured in Adam's record. Because it was Adam that created that allowance to the face of the earth. If men could name things, it was because Adam named them. If Adam had not revealed the possibility of giving nomenclature to things that God created, you wouldn't have dared do it. Adam was the patriarch that ordered the first order of manifestation on the face of the earth. But the reason was because in the cool of the day, he kept looking at him. He kept looking at him. And the more he saw him, the more he became like him. The key of power is encounter. This is why we stay long in the place of prayer. It's not because we want to brag that we pray for 10 hours. If it was about time, it would have been a waste. If it was about time, it would have been a waste. We pray into encounters. We don't pray because we want to pray long. We pray long because there are gates in the heavens. And as we join in prayer, we ascend. That's why he said, have you not heard? Has it not been said to you that the everlasting God fainted not? Neither is he weary. He giveth power to the faint. And unto them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord. They mount up with wings like the eagles. They run, they are not weary. They walk, they do not faint. What has happened? They have begun to see something that is not within human civilization. Once upon a time, the guy could faint. But when he began to mount up, he started seeing something else. He started seeing something else. And the Bible said Jesus was weak and he went to Gethsemane. And there he knelt down in fear and he was praying. And suddenly he said, Angels came and strengthened him. He said in John, Matthew chapter 17, verse 2, he said, As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment glistered. And there stood, they appeared before him Moses and Elias. When we begin to ascend, we begin to see heavenly realities. And when you see it, you come out with him. Because when we shall see him, we shall be like him. If you have not had encounter, you have no power. My brothers and sisters, don't use your life for experiment. Instead of confronting the mountain, labor in the spirit to have encounter. Don't begin from the mountain because a motivational preacher told you things. Don't begin there. Don't begin there. This is not psychology. You cannot labor in the spirit to catch a glimpse of reality. But you want to go and labor with the mountain. That's why our labor is in futility. A man who cannot stay with God until he touches him wants to go and command the mountain to move. So instead of spending time with God and commanding things on earth, you don't spend time with God and you come to earth and things command you. Because what you see is what controls you. Can I tell you why you are weak? It's because of the things you have seen and the things that you have not seen. You have only seen fear. You have only seen intimidation. You have only seen corruption. But he said, who shall stand upon the mountains of God? Who shall ascend his holy hills? Who shall ascend? Because when you ascend that mountain, you can control things on earth. Men don't change because our message is sweet. Men don't change because our message is intelligent. Men change because our message commands change. It com no, please, sit down. It compels them. They don't know what they are hearing, yet they can't deny it. Somebody played my message for one elder in the village. He said, this man, if they talk too quick, oh, I know they hear what they talk, but as they hear, uh, 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 they love God. I don't know what they happen. I don't know what they talk, but as they hear, uh, I say, spirits don't speak English. Spirit speaks spirit and life. So what you are hearing is spirit and life. And when that life enters you, all of a sudden, it's called endunamo. You mount up with wings. I am saying this to someone so that when you leave this meeting, you will go and labor in the spirit. See, we have abused impartations. 
Because people cannot wait on God for three hours. But they wait on men for three weeks. And then they come struggling to cut button, to touch you. You are wasting your time. When you see him, then you shall be like him. Men must be encouraged to stay with God. Because power in the spirit is not even ability to raise the dead. It's ability to stand in the presence. To stand. To stand. Moses was able to stand there for 40 days. He stood at the age of 80 to tell you it's not physical strength. He climbed Sinai. Sinai is over 9,000 feet tall. But there was something he was looking for. He knew the power he commanded was based on what he saw. And sometimes after climbing Sinai, God will not be waiting for him. He will still come there and wait for six days. Then Shekinah will come. And when the Shekinah come, as Moses leaves the mountain, you will think he has left God on the mountain. And suddenly, the Bible will say, and Moses wished not that his face shone. Because the God he thought he left, he didn't leave him. The God followed him out. When you wait on God, God follows you. And then the guy comes. If he says A, A becomes law. Moses became so strong in this reality until the Old Testament was called the laws of Moses. They were not called the laws of God. They were called the laws of Moses. He had mingled with God so much that when he comes out, he fleshes out divinity. How do you touch such a man? You dare him and say, if I be a man of God, let the earth open his mouth and swallow you. And then you will say, earth, where is the ear of the earth? You are joking. If he says it, it will happen. If I be a man of God, let the earth open up. Who has done it before? It doesn't need to be done. A man who carries power does not only command spirit, he commands nature. Did you not read about David? He said, Cause be the mountains of Giboa, for you were standing in the day that the Lord's anointing, fe anointed fell. That means Moses goes to war with, David goes to war with mountains. He doesn't only fight with men, he fights with invincible reality. He can cause the wind to poison you. And the wind will begin to fight you. Breath will be withdrawn from you. Because a man of power comes and says, Because you refuse and rebel against God, I, release, I remove breath from your nostril. And then you say he's proud. After a while, the person dies. You say, what is happening? That's the power that commands. But before you enter that power, you will become a creature of encounters. A creature of encounter. You must look upon him every morning. The culture of waiting on God, the culture of encountering God have left our generation. We are now a generation of preachers. But in the days when power invaded this earth, they were intercessors. They were men that knew how to wait on God. A man can stand up on the first of the, of the month and say, I'm coming. And he climbs the mountain and is there until the 30th of that month. And then he comes down You say, where did you go to? He said, I went to see the Lord. Which God are you talking about? The one I read in the Bible. You are the only person that your God is still trapped in the Bible. For some other people, their God has come out of the Bible. They can talk to him and they can hear him. You are the only person that your God is a set of exegesis. That you talk about and you are not sure of. You preach on healing when sickness comes. Then you discover you don't know what you are talking about. Because there is a difference between mental knowledge and experiential knowledge. It's called Gnosko. There are some who have had intercourse with that God. They have stayed with that God until that God has become like them. That's what Jesus meant when he said that we may be in you as I am in you and you are in me. He says so that they will be in you and you in them. It's a journey beyond theory. It's intercourse. It's encounter. Too many Christians are dry because they have no encounters. No encounter. We shuffle messages from people and then we preach messages from people. The messages we preach, we don't even believe it. You are preaching powerfully about power. Somebody comes, say, my ear, I have a problem. And suddenly the preacher of power say, go there, go, let them pray for you. Somebody is demonized. And then you see 10 people gather around him. Shabba, baba, shabba, baba, shabba. Who told you they pray in tongues to demons? When the man of power comes, he say, in the name of Jesus, get out. I don't, why waste your time praying in tongues? Are you trying to, inter to interact with the demon? When you are praying in tongues to mingle with God, you see a demon, you are praying in tongues. Do you want to mingle with the demon? 
lack of power and then we do all kinds of try and error even us know that most of the people we see are healed they took drugs and you come and say ah when we pray uh, uh, God help nothing happens sir if God help it will be without doubt And if you don't labor, don't wait until the evil day comes. Because there is an allocation of an evil day for everyone. But for we that have the power of God, the evil day becomes the day of manifestation. Don't wait. If I begin to talk about encounters now, talk about the things I've seen in heaven, this place will explode. People start screaming, hey, hey, hey. Ah. And we have not even begun to look at these things. There are men that live there. They are men. A brother was telling us how that he went to a lot of rituals, through a lot of rituals to be baptized into demonic power. And every night when he goes to the room, he just enters the water. And then he knows a lot of gears in that city that comes there. They are just in is their realm. And then I thought it was only the demonic. Until I started reading after people like Anna Rontri. Anna Rontri went to heaven. <laughs> went to heaven. And <laughs> she was in heaven dialoguing. And then one young prophet that God began to help also ascended. And then he came and saw Anna Rontri. He was giving access for moments. He entered and left. Anna Rontri was still there. The next time God brought him after two years, he still met an around tree there. So when he came to earth, he thought an around tree was dead. He now went for a prophetic conference. He saw her. <laughs> Who is this? And he went and knelt down. I saw you in heaven. Meanwhile, those who are around things, the guy is going for impartation. They are talking about their meeting somewhere else beyond the skies. <laughs> I met you in heaven. What? I, I thought you were dead. He said, no. But I have two locations. I live there. <laughs> Somebody came to Bob Jones. When he joined, I had an encounter with Jesus. And he told Bob Jones, no, he had an encounter. And Jesus told him to go meet Bob Jones. And he will tell him the things he needs to understand. How can I meet Jesus and I'm going to meet another man? Because there are some men that know mene mene, take of They live there. That's why when Jesus encountered Saul, he told him, go to the city, you'll be told what to do. And Ananias told him and said, brother Saul, the Jesus that you met on your way to Damascus sent me to you. What do you mean? I had a glorious encounter. I thought it was a brother Saul. That Jesus you met spoke to me. So what you call an encounter has become my habitation. I live there. And God told rejoiner, go to Bob Jones, he will tell you what to do. And when Rejoiner was coming in the morning, Bob Jones looked at him and began to tell him about the encounters he had yesterday and told him what the five things God told him meant. Where were you, sir? Are we all on earth? No, we are not. I read about Pastor Chris. He was to go for healing meeting. The same healing meeting you throw in casually. No wonder all our testimony are pain on the leg, pain on the back, pain on the tummy. He was meditating on how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about to? He was there for four hours. The meeting passed. When they came to tell him that it's time for meeting, they said, conference around him. If you come near, the power of God knocked you down. Everybody who caught, people were littered under the power. Meanwhile, the man was just meditating. Medi he, he was traveling. He was journeying. He was journeying. Meeting passed, he didn't know. I've gone for Savarat's conference many times. Sometimes you go to call him, he doesn't come. Why did you think Paul sent handkerchiefs? Yes. Do you think Paul was busy? It was in the place of intercourse. Sorry, I can't come out today. Take the hanky there. Anything my sermon of two hours can do, my lifeless handkerchief can do. And for more than 10 centuries, some people have not yet been able to cast out demons, whereas handkerchiefs have casted out demons. What is the difference? It's a lack of power. Yahweh, Yahweh. Don't just become one of 
one of the many people. How can you come into your own generation and you are lost in the crowd? And then you want to return to Zion and tell them you lived on the earth. That's an error. That's an error. But what will distinguish you is the level of authority that you carry. And the way to authority is encounter with the Lord. Kill yourself on that mountain until the word of God comes alive or the Lord appears to you or something happens, you will not go back. Don't be a theologian. There are too many of them. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. The second thing that makes for spiritual power is the move of the spirit. See, this is why power is scarce. I'm telling you because few people experience these things. And those who don't experience it come out to argue. And they keep comparing notes. Notes don't cast out demons. I was sharing humorously in Kaduna. You see a man who have subdued the, 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 the darkness of his generation talking. And then somebody who has no encounter, no, who has not touched reality, will come and perch on the comment box. <laughs> and he's talking what he doesn't know. Talking what they don't know. So it's on comment. Your platform is on comment box. And then he perches there. <laughs> like a gazelle. Bringing scriptures from left to right. Throwing them like arrows. How about this scripture? How about, you know all this scripture. How come you're on the comment box? <laughs> Before you know, some of them will take laptop and type four pages. Back, 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 back. No wonder you have time. They will type four pages. They want people to read. After typing for two hours, it's only one person that will read it. And then you'll see one like. The like will hang like this. And then he will say, yeah, he has told them the truth. Who? You don't know that even to hear you is a commandment in the spirit. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm here, well, please, hear ye him. Who told you they will hear you? I told my friends humorously, I don't fight for platforms and pulpits. Because even if they take you to Shiloh and you preach, nobody will remember you came. Unless there is power. There is a commandment in the spirit that says, hear ye him. If that commandment has not gone forth, if you like, go to TBN. They will forget that you ever came. You will finish preaching and come down. Even the people in the studio will say, yeah, how are you? They will not say, why well, you the one preaching now? Well done, well done. Don't join the bandwagon. Labor in the spirit. It's an honorable thing. The Bible said the glory of the Lord is to conceal a matter. He said, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. He said the Christians in Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica because when they heard the word, they went to search to see if the thing said were so. Some people will tell you, you don't need encounter. Just meditate. You are joking. Those who have it know. They can tell you every spot that there was a shift in their life. Because it is never by coincidence. It's definite and deliberate. They will tell you when the slain anointing came on them. They will tell you when the anointing to pack crowds and overflow came on them. They will tell you when the anointing to heal the sick. It is definite. It's not coincidental. The second thing that makes for the power of God is the move of the Spirit. Luke 1 35, he said, And the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And that thing that will be formed in you shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Holy Ghost shall come. Now, oh, I was sharing with Dunsin two days ago, and he said, What struck him about the scripture? He said, Mary asked, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. 
So there is a kind of power that comes upon you that everything that should be a disadvantage becomes the access point for manifestation. The impossible part of it is what makes the testimony beautiful. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. If there is no move of the Spirit in your life, there's no power. Everybody that commands authority in the kingdom is a man flooded with the move of the Spirit. This is not psychology. This is not emotional. It's a definite reality. The move of the Spirit in their soul is strong. And the move of the Spirit is not a feeling. Yes, yes. Sir, it's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. He said, not many days from now, the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Spirit, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then somebody say, I have the Holy Ghost, so I have power. Acts chapter 4 verse 29. When they were flogged, beaten and threatened, they went back to their own company. And as they prayed, the place where they were was shaking. And they were filled with the spirit again. And verse 33, with great power. With great power. It was the move of the spirit that made for power. There are many people that are dry. The Holy Ghost don't move in their lives. They come on the altar and they know the songs to sing to spoil the people. I know my songs. If I begin to sing them, I will jack up like a bird. I deliberately didn't sing them. Because it's not about a song. I want to show you something that you will deliberately practice. And then you will touch a sick person. He will be healed. Yes. It's not psychology. Yes, yes, yes. You will speak over something. It will happen. It's not psychology. Because there will be authority on your lips. And the Holy Ghost filled them afresh and with great power gave testimony to the apostles of the resurrection and great grace was upon them all. It was the move of the spirit that necessitated it. But how do you know the move of the spirit is in your life? There is a definite indicator for the move of the spirit. The indicator that the move of the spirit is in a man's life is not that he prays loud. It's not that when he carries the microphone he's thundering like thunder. No. The indicator that the move of the spirit is strong upon a man's life is not that he's charismatic. It is an organic thing. A man that God is moving upon, sustain one thing, is called hunger. There is hunger for the presence of God. The day the hunger for the presence begins to die, the move of the spirit is beginning to wane. And the things you could command before, you will be shocked, you will try it, it will not happen. For most of us who are preachers, we are, most, we are at a most risky place on this subject. Because you keep dispensing. You keep dispensing. You, I told my brother, I'm not supposed to be here. I came here on the base of relationship. Up until yesterday, I was lying down helpless. I said, Lord, Lord, I'm strengthened with might by your spirit in the inner man. I should be recovering. I can't even feel myself. But there is a truth I need to release into your hands. And that's why I came. It's a move. If a man is, if the move of the spirit is upon a man, it's not a feeling. It is unending passion for the presence. I was talking with a, a brother and he told me something. He said the best gift of the spirit and the first gift of the spirit is not one of the nine gifts that the world have taught. He said the Bible said in 1 Peter 2 verse 2, as newborn babes desire, desire, the sincere meek, the word there is desire, the ability to continually hunger for God and for his things, that's the best gift a spirit can give to you if a man constantly desires God he doesn't even need to go around preaching he can kneel in his room and he can provoke revival over eternity because he's talking did you not read, when Jesus came, who provoked the revival? it was Simeon and Anna they were not part of the preachers of their generation. They were just in the synagogue praying. And the moment they brought Jesus to the temple, the Bible says, Simeon moved by the Spirit. The Holy Ghost himself went to meet him. He said, this thing you have interceded for has come. So you come and announce it. 
The guy was not a preacher. Nobody knew him. But he could not leave the presence of God. The men that shake territories are not necessarily the ones that travel about. The men that shake territories are the men that will never back off from the presence. There is something that keeps them there. In John chapter 2 verse 17, he said, The zeal of my father's house. The zeal. It's not zeal for preaching. It's not zeal for miracle. He said, the zeal of my father's heart has consumed me. Jesus will leave a crusade and go to the mountain. And he will be there from night to morning. How come he's never tired? There was an energy on his inside that pulls him to God perpetually. And David knew it first time. He knew it. He said, as the deer panted. As the deer panted. As the deer panted. You look at David, he fought 44 battles. He won. You think it's about bows and arrow. He has nothing to do. He said, as the deer panted after the Lord. So my soul longed after thee. In a dry and in a testy land. Where no waters is. At some point he said, even while I am on my bed. Thy thoughts and thy words are the meditations of my heart. That's a warrior. So the power that David used to fight war was not skill, it was hunger. When God wanted to punish David, he said, you can do anything to me, but take not thy spirit from within me. I can afford to lose the throne. I can afford to lose everything, but your presence never, never, never. And so long as David sought after the Lord, the hand of God was perpetually upon him. Every time a man begins to seek the presence of God, he begins to unlock the heavens. He begins to unlock the heavens. This is the secret of Elijah. Many people thought Elijah was just powerful because he was a man of faith. Elijah was more a man of intimacy than a man of faith because everything you see Elijah does, he does it from the place of intimacy. He told the king, put your house together. There will be an abundance of rain. And then you will think he declares and he goes to eat. And he went to the mountain and knelt down seven times. Mana, kada, mana, kada. Until he said, go and check. Go and check. So he knew to unlock the heavens. You do it on your knee. And as he was groaning there, at the seventh time, the servant came and said, I saw something that looked like the feast of a man. So Elijah created that feast in the cloud. The feast was nowhere. He created it. Because he knows the secret of power. When Jesus was about to begin ministry, it was the season of temptation for him. The Bible said the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. But when Jesus went there, he changed his season. He was engaging God. Because before the devil came, he went 40 days and 40 nights in prayer and fasting. When the devil came, that was a walkover. What Jesus did on that mountain that was supposed to be a season of temptation became a season of announcing and affecting his word. But how did he do it? By engaging God. By pressing into God. And as he was groaning there, the writings of the spirit began to change. We say, come to the mountain to be tempted. But because of what you are doing now, it will no longer be temptation that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people that sat in darkness have seen a great light and he stepped down from the mountain and his fame went abroad. The power to cause change is resident upon hunger. How much of it do you carry? How much of it? There are many Christians that are dry. Even when they are in church, they are already tired. One hour in church, they are frustrated. And then they are sleeping. They think they are tired. They are not. There is no capacity for the move of God. So the moment they step out, they were dozing in church. But as they enter the road immediately, they become agile. Because the God of this world still has a place in their heart. So no matter how tired they were in church, when they step out and they begin to interact with the one they have intimacy with on the internet, on the television, with their friends, they come alive. Hunger for the presence of God. These are ancient realities, but they are no longer taught. I read the story of Brother Lawrence and God told him that a servant in the kingdom of God is more important than a general. Because a servant is always there to attend to his voice. Some generals are giving away to commanding. So they are too used to the battlefield that they forget the sounds of Zion. They never return. They never return. They are obsessed with commanding the army. And they forget. They forget. 
So in the to Exodus 28 verse 1 and 2, he said to anoint Aaron and his son to minister unto me in the priest office. So before legislation, there is intimacy. If you can't minister to him, you have no power to legislate over your territory. The reason we are handicapped is because hunger for God has diminished. Many things have truncated it. It is dwarfed. There are no men anymore that yearns after God. People are asking for the mantle of Babalola. Did you know that every three hours they pray in tongues for one hour in Babalola's house for close to 40 years? Did you know that during the early part of the year, for the first four months, the man goes to the mountain to spend 40 days in prayer? Are you aware of the labors of Babalola in the spirit? Do you have his hunger? If that unction rests upon you, do you have the capacity to accommodate it? I was standing on the altar. An unction came upon me. I almost collapsed. That was when I knew that instead of praying for, for dimension, we, we need to pray for capacity. Because what is coming, it can't rest on men. They are too shallow. There's no depth. There's no capacity for the Holy Ghost to rest upon. We receive impartations. They don't last for two weeks. Because we don't have the capacity to nurture the concentrate consecration for that impartation. You go to receive an impartation from a man that spent the first six hours of his day in prayer. Do you know the level of appetite that that impartation rests on? And then your own appetite is five minutes. And then how can you accommodate that impartation? When the spirit comes, it will lift. That's why all the big men have imparted us. Yet there's no manifestation. Because appetite is not there. Appetite. It is the volume of your appetite that determines the degree of your manifestation. When you have no appetite for a spirit, you can't host the dimensions of that spirit. You may hear things and desire it. It will end in the realm of desire until hunger drives you there. And when you come before that spirit, he will allow you for a long time because he wants to, he wants to enlarge your appetite. You will come, you will pray for five minutes, you will go, he won't say anything. You will increase it to three minutes, to three hours. To, did you not read about the Azusa Street Revival? They prayed in tongues for seven hours for eight months and he told them to increase it to nine hours. What is coming? The urgency of the spirit. Their capacity has not yet been enlarged and he needed to work on it. To work on it. So they increased and when they began to enlarge their appetite, suddenly the move of the spirit came. That's why he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued. He didn't say tarry for 10 days. He didn't say tarry for 20 days. Tarry until you are endued. When you come to that gauge of the spirit where you can accommodate him, then the wind of the spirit will move. Many people have no appetite for God. They have appetite for many things. The guy can sit and watch four matches. The guy can sit and watch three seasonal movies in three weeks. But when you say come to God's presence, suddenly he begins to window. He begins to dwindle. He begins to, to, to drown. But he said, they that journey to the deep, they are the ones that qualify to see the wonders of God. You have not journeyed enough. Your appetite is too shallow. The measure that you are looking for, it takes appetite to accommodate it. How much of God can you accommodate? This is what we do when we besiege him. Because when you want to increase hunger, you dump yourself on God. And as you keep pressing, as you keep pressing, you may not see light in the sky. You may not see an angel walk into your room. You may not hear a voice saying, Nathaniel, my son, you are a prophet. You may not hear that. But after 40 days, you will discover that what you were doing for one hour that looked like Mount Sinai, suddenly 12 hours, you are that's when you are beginning to charge. At that point, you can begin to interact in the heavens. And when the spirit comes down, it will come, he will come down in measures unquantified. Our generation lacks hunger. We only desire manifestation. But we don't desire the presence. This is why we cannot command power. It's beyond suit. It's beyond utterance. I come to certain places and then the anointing for preaching comes on me. And I begin to touch my vocabularies. And people are shouting everywhere. One day I stop. I say, what did I say? <laughs> Sir, what did I say? <laughs> I said, wait, wait. Off, off the keyboard. What did I say? I went back and told God, help me, help me. Help me. So sometimes I come to a place, I, 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 I bombard them with 
instructions upon instructions. So if they don't remember anything, when they go home, they will remember hunger. They will remember encounter. If that's all they remember, any way they route it, perfect. Yahweh, Yahweh. In Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, he said, Kiss me with the kisses of my, thy mouth. He said, Thy love is better than wine. Thy love is better than wine. The guy knew the obsession of his generation. What intoxicated his generation was wine, but he had found another appetite. He said, Thy love is better than wine. He said, my king has invited me to his bedchamber. He said, we will not remember the testimony of the wine. He has found another obsession. And for that one, he can be there for many days. And the more he stays with him, the more he comes alive. The more he comes alive. The more he comes. Because the appetite is unending. You can't quench it. People love men, but they don't love God. They love the things of God, but they don't love God. God told me something. He said, our generation is still struggling with the lowest realm of power. The ability to command things. The ability to command things. And then when we command things, we are happy. He said, but there are realms of power. He said, the highest realm of power is stamina in my presence. That's why the 20 and 4 elders are the highest ranking in Zion. They have the ability to stay in the presence. The Bible said the four beasts, day and night, forever and ever, forever and ever, they stand in the presence of God. What are they doing? Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb. Holy, forever and ever, day and night. They don't need to manifest. But when you read the scripture, you will discover that this being walk at the frequency of God. When Ezekiel saw the throne of God, he said, wherever God went, the four living creatures went at the same speed. They don't need to manifest anymore because they have built capacity to stand in God's presence. They function exactly like God. They move like the, the lightning and the thunder. When God moves, they have moved. When the wheels move, they have moved. You can't see God and not see them. Every time you see them moving, know that's the frequency of God. And every time you see God moving, know that is their frequency. How did they become so mighty? Those ones don't need to do any stunt. When they appear, their similitude is like that of Yahweh himself. Because they have built power to stand in God's presence. The strongest of us is not the one that works in the greatest miracle. It's the one that can stand in the presence. The man with unending hunger for the presence. The horn of that one is like the government of heaven. It's like the deer. When you want to see the power of a deer, you check his horns. When a deer grows into maturity, the horn splits into seven. That's the seven government of heaven. It is reflective of authority, not just on earth, but in the spirit. A man can stand and is no longer commanding just demons. He's no longer commanding healing. But when he speaks, he resonates in Zion. The Bible said Joshua told the sun to stand upon the mountains of Ajalon and the moon upon the valley of Gibeon. He said the sun did not make haste to go down. And he said something that I cannot use any theology to explain. He said there have never been a day like that. And never will there be. He said in the day that God hearkened to the voice of a man. These are men that have power in the courts of heaven. The Bible spoke concerning Abraham. He said, will I do a thing without telling my servant, Abraham? That's God talking. They perfected the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah from the heights of heaven. And God came down with two angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham had enough stature. And he said, far be it from you that the just God will destroy the righteous and the unrighteous. What if you find 50 men? Do you mean you can change on earth things that were concluded in heaven? If you live in heaven, yes, you can. And God said, if I find 50 righteous men, I will not destroy the land. And he was going to say, if I found favor with you, what if you find 40 righteous men? So if Abraham had not stopped, Abraham would have changed something 
that the court of heaven have concluded. That's the level of power a man that stands in the presence commands. No wonder Elijah said, before God whom I stand, there shall be no rain nor dew. The power to stop heaven, it is for men that stands in the presence. Our generation don't know the presence. We know scriptures. We know messages. We know strategies and gimmicks. But we have no power. We have no power. Because there are no men that can stand in the presence. We come from meetings like this and all we are looking for is impartation. No. When you come from meetings like this, live with instructions. Tell yourself, I'm tired of the status quo. Apostle A imparted me. Apostle B imparted me. Apostle C imparted me. I appreciate this impartation, but I want to become. What is it that this man saw? How did they enter into this reality? I want it. And if it takes you to stay with God for eight months, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because that eight months will make your life count in the next 40 years. If you don't wait, you will continue with mediocrity until when you are 90 years. It will look as if you are there, but you are not there. They looked at you, they say you are an apostle. They honored you, but when they came close, there was nothing. They say you are a revivalist. You look like it, but when they came close, there was nothing. They say you have healing mantle. When they came close, there was nothing. Because every time they confronted you one-on-one, -on -one, there was no reality to show. Tell yourself, I refuse mediocrity. There is something I must step into. I know this reality is bigger than impartation. There is an instruction in the spirit that I must commit myself to for this thing to work out through me. I don't want try and error. I went for a meeting one month ago. Something happened. And then nothing happened again until you. after one month. And every time you give testimony, four years ago, five years ago, I don't want anything ago. I want everything now. Because his name is called, I am that I am. Every time I want God to manifest. So what must I do? Is to tarry. Is to tarry. Is to tarry. That's true power. If you want to cause changes, this is the key. This is the key. It's bigger than doctrine. I tell you, it is bigger than doctrine. These are the secrets that changes things in the natural realm. Force yourself to stay there. Until the chambers of your spirit begin to open up. I was there for three hours. Nothing happened. I will increase it to four hours. I stayed for four hours for one month. Nothing happened. I won't go out when nothing has happened. I will move it to five hours. I was there for six hours. Nothing happened. I will move it to seven hours. By all means, stay until the move of the spirit begins. When it begins, even yourself will know that something has changed. You will no longer try to cajole people. At any time, you can stop and say, let this happen. You have it. You have it. God told me the mystery of mantles. He said the way mantles are created in the spirit is to download a dimension. He said when you download a dimension, that dimension is handed to you as a mantle. You can hand it over to another generation. And there were certain men that it took 10 years for a dimension to download in their lives. There were certain men that it took five years. There were certain men that it took months. For months, the Holy Ghost bound them. Don't go out in the daytime. Don't sleep at night. And every night they stand up. When they are tired and they want to sleep, that hand will come and tap them. Wake up. And every night they stand. And after six months, the download is complete. And God says, go out. And then the guy comes out. And he becomes like a cherubim among men. He has downloaded something from Zion. He took six, sleep, six months of sleepless night, but he waited. Never truncate what God began in your life because you lose capacity to stand in the presence. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, hey, hey. Time. We're out of time. The third thing I wanted to share is how to build power. You want into power by encounter. You sustain power by hunger. That's the move of the spirit. But there is a way to build power. But we don't have time. I would have shown you 
the way to build the four different kinds of power. So you will know what men do. Please stay calm. Stay calm. I have 10 more minutes. If you leave with this instruction, I'm okay. If you leave with this instruction and you practice it, I'm okay. But just to mention the four Greek words for power that all of you know and quote. How do you build it? Exousia is a positional power. Now, these are the most vital things men should know in order to win and to rule in their generation. Exousia is a function of position with Christ and you attain that position by new birth. So every time your revelation of Jesus increases, you grow in exousia. Exousia is not work-based. It's a revelation-based. So when a man grows in his revelation of Jesus, he grows naturally in authority. Exousia. Dunamis is a function of engagement. He said, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Ephesians 3.20 According to the power at work on your inside. So it is the working and the engagement of dunamis that produces results. And the way you engage dunamis is by praying in the Holy Spirit. So every time you pray through, you discover that the power to cause changes is activated. But you see, if you stop at that level, you will come for a meeting, pray for the blind. Their eyes will open. The next blind man you see, you'll be afraid. The reason is because you generated enough power to cause that change. But you don't live there. So you need another wisdom to handle the other two kinds of power called Iskus and Kratos. Ephesians 6.10, it says, be strong in the Lord and in the Kratos of his Iskus. The way to build Kratos and Iskus is to be strong. So those ones are not momentary. They are continuous. So while you build Dunamis by praying through, you build Kratos by praying consistently. So a man can pray for 10 hours and generate Dunamis. But if he wants to generate Kratos, he may need to pray for five years. He may need to pray for four years. And when he has built Kratos, he is strong already in the Lord. He doesn't need to prepare to do things. He has become a prepared man. Because there is a bank of energy in his spirit man. And a man builds Iskus. Not just by a revelation of Jesus, but by living perpetually under the authority of Jesus Christ. So Jesus says, moves, he moves. Jesus says, stops, he stops. When he walks under authority for a long time, that authority is now invested in him. He becomes the embodiment of that authority. That's the man that has Iskus. So Iskus is superior to Exousia and Kratos is superior to Dunamis because you generate Dunamis for momentary purpose, but you generate Kratos for daily living. You generate Exousia for momentary purpose, but you generate Iskus for daily living. Iskus and Kratos are stamina. This is how men win. So they wake up in the morning, they say, it's done. Somebody shared a testimony. A witch struck him. And then he went into coma. And then in coma, he saw himself in a big pot that was covered. Struggling to come out. And he couldn't come out. The wife now went to Dr. Paul and Enchen. And when he narrated the story that the husband has been in coma, they are trying everything, it's not working. Dr. Paul just said, I command that pot to break. Where the man was in the pot, he said he saw lightning from heaven, scattered the pot. The first question is, how did he know the man was in the pot? And then by what means did he generate thunder in the spirit realm? It didn't happen in the natural. So when men are doing things in the natural, they are, they are throwing bows and arrows, lightning and thunder in the spirit realm. And the pot shattered and instantly the man came out of coma. And the man came to narrate the story. How that the thunder struck. Dr. Paul didn't go to pray and prepare for a meeting. There was enough Kratos. So if he speaks, he resonates in the demonic realm. This is how we build power. So when God begins to trouble you to pray in tongues every day for one hour, he is taking you somewhere. The name of that place is called Kratos. When you get there, that's when you will mount up in the energies of God. But many Christians... They don't know. That's why I began by telling you Christianity must be practiced. 
He says, strong meat belongs to them who are of full age, who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern good and evil. It must be practice. And the way to do it is in the spirit. Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Where you are sitting, just tell the Lord now. Some of you, you need encounter. Some of you, you need hunger. And some of you, you need consistency to build power. I assure you, if we go through this congregation, your manifestation is hinging on one of these three things. Most of you have never had any tangible encounter, so you don't believe the spirit. You don't believe in spiritual things. Some of you, your hunger for God died many years ago. So even the things you knew and handled, you have lost them. And some of you, even though God is talking to you, there's no stamina, there's no energy to bring forth. If these three things can be actualized from among us here, generous, I mean generous we rise for this generation. I don't know which is what you need. But ask the Lord now. I want to pray for in the next five minutes. Ask the Lord. If it's an encounter you need, you will have one. If it is stamina, you will have it. If it is hunger, you will have it. I release the sound of the heaven, the sound of creation. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. Yahweh, Yahweh. Don't worry, just sit down, sit down where you don't worry, don't worry, you don't have to stand up. I told you it's not religious, unless you are led to stand, you don't have to stand up. See, what I'm telling you is something you apply in your business. It's something you apply in everyday life, it's not psychology. If I wanted to blow this all open, I know what to do. I can even be transmitting on Zoom and this place will scatter. The last dynamics you had last year, I streamed on Zoom. I can, this place can scatter while I'm talking on Zoom. But I've come to realize that we need instructions. Instructions that will be encrypted in lively stones that can never be forgotten. Yahweh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation. Shekinah is seen. We cry, holy, 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 unto Yeshua. Shekinah is seen. of the, the nature of teaching I have done, we will do it this way. So you stop playing. Stop playing. Because of the nature of teaching. So it will not be soulish. Father, I 
I want God to anoint people with fire. Because of the nature of teaching I've done, I don't want anything to tickle your emotion. Father, every heart open here tonight. Let your hand come upon them strong. And let there be an impact. Oh man. Let there be an impartation of fire. <laughs> From the left to the right. From the front to the back. To the overflows outside. You see, some of you will start crying. Because there will be an something will be ingrained in your voice now to make you a revivalist to your generation and through you an awakening will be engendered father carriers of the trumpet of revival some of you your hands and your leg will start burning you will start having experiences that you can't control So that anointing will descend on 24 people. Touch! Ushers, you can find them now. Nothing emotional. That's why I told you to sit. In Jesus' name, please stop praying in tongues. Stop praying in tongues. Allow the angels to anoint people. Don't distract us with tongues. Fire of the spirit. Touch. Angels will walk through these eyes. And there's a being of fire walking outside the door. It's a season of activation. Touch. I want to pray for the sick quickly. But ushers, ushers, just find those ones quick. Find those ones. There are some of you, your body will begin to move irregularly. You can't hold yourself. It looks as if you are drunk. It looks as if you are drunk. It's a move of the spirit. Please help them so they are not injured. It's getting stronger. Holy Ghost. The things I share today, most of you that God is ministering to, God has told you these things already. I just came to, to echo it in your heart. Because we need something genuine. Huh. Don't leave them at the eyes. Bring them forward so people don't march on them. There's an anointing for speed. And this one is meant for ministers. You have labored. And you are yet laboring. But it seems nothing is moving. Something is about to come upon you. To accelerate everything you do. Father. I release it now. Please stay sensitive. I want you to receive conviction. This is not psychology. If I was teaching about the heavens, about God, about angels, I know most of you will be shouting and running. I want you to know it's not psychology. And it's not church based. It's not church based.
Ushers, bring them forward. Let's be sure. If we get to 24, I will stop. It's about to get brutal. I'm seeing some persons being taught with coals of fire. Coals of fire. Coals of fire. God is not touching you. Just, just, you can sit down, but just be sensitive, that's all. Some of you will go home, you will not be able to sleep. You won't know why. You will lose your sleep for many days. For many days, you will not be able to sleep. Encounters begin to take place. Encounters. If you are sick in your body, place your hands there. Those of you this way, please look at me. Those of you by this road. Please stretch your hands towards me. There, are, there is somebody here with the anointing of a seer. This person is a lady. You are between the age of, you are just crossing teen, your teen age. Imagine. Somebody here with the anointing of a seer. Father, not just one. I provoke that dimension. Now, Lord, now, 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 now. Now, 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 I command I see. If you learn how to partner with the angels that minister with you even in the market it will bring the presence of God it's not it's not keyboard and drum it's not keyboard and drum these things I teach you if you engage it you will be shocked what will happen to you in six months the way this service is if I wanted to change the oil I had the ability to change it to begin to preach and people will not be able to sit. It's available to everybody. We struggle because we don't have a witness in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Peace be still. I want to pray for the sick now. Don't worry. Most of you will go home tonight. You will not be able to sleep. You will see what I'm telling you. You will not be able to sleep. I want it to be very boring so that you will know this is not psychology. People are not psyched to act in a certain way. I want to pray for the sick. If you have a challenge with your ear, put your hands there. If you have a challenge with your eyes, put your hands there. 
You have a challenge with your bones, any broken joints, just put your hands there. And don't bother yourself, just forget about it. I don't know how to do this so that it is so unconventional. I'm trying to make it unchurchy. I'm trying to make it highly unconventional. So that you know it's not for church people. Because you will have to go to the market. You have to go to the government. You have to go to the academia. It's not church. That's the point I'm trying to raise. Place your hands on your eyes, on your ears. Japheth. Hope we still have sick people remaining. <laughs> this one, all of you. All of you have ministered already. <laughs> I command demons of infirmities. Leave their bodies now. I arrest spirits of sickness. I arrest spirits of infirmity. I command you, leave them now. I command chains of infirmity be broken in the name of Jesus. I command ears to hear, eyes see, bones and muscles be fixed. I command organ infections be healed. And I release life. I release life. I release life. Is this very boring? I release life. I release life. I release life. In the name of Jesus. Do you know why I'm doing what I'm doing? You will go to the market. Somebody will tell you, I'm hot on my spine. You will say, let me see. You will put your hands there. And say, be healed. And you will say, check. And the person will check and say, ah, it's reduced. You will come again. And you will put your hand and say, be healed. You will not need to, hey, hey, hey. No, that one is for your bedroom. If we were moving in a certain way, you say, oh boy, it's apostolic movement. <laughs> Some people will see me. They tell me it's apostolic movement. So when I want to teach something that I need them to practice, I make it in a way that they are either bored or their attention leave me. So they will face the principle of thought and they will go home with it. Now, in Jesus' name, check your bodies. Check your ears, check your eyes, check your back, your joints. If you have noticed a change, wave at me. If you have noticed any change, just, please, don't be religious, okay? Don't be religious. I want to make this in such a way that the least person here, if he starts praying, he will have confidence to address issues. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So you will not think it's an exclusive reserve of pulpit ministers. Now, check your bodies. If you have noticed any change, wave at me. Just lift your hands, your right hand. If you have noticed any change at all. Okay. Even in the overflow, if you have noticed any change, just wave. Just wave. Those of you who need to bend, you need to bend down. You need to check your ears, check your eyes. Just check it. Can I see that wave one more time? Any change? Check outside, check outside, check outside. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. We cry, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Now, 
If you have noticed the change, it's a taboo to go home without testifying. So come out quickly. Let's just know how many people God has touched. Holy. If you are in the overflow, you can come into the hall. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. We cry, holy. Can I hear one or two testimonies? Apostle, she came here with numbness on her right side. Numbness? Numbness on her right side. Your right side? For, for how about long? two weeks. Two weeks two now. Two weeks? You felt numb? Yes, sir. While prayer was going on right now. What couldn't now, you do? She, since he came out here, she's been... As if blood was not flowing. It was numb for two weeks. Yes, sir. So what happened now? I cannot feel it again. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. We cry, holy. Holy, holy. Pamela. Holy, holy, holy. Apostle. What happened? He had pile. You had pile. Pile since 2015. Since 2015? Yes, sir. Pile. So what happened now? As prayers went on, he couldn't feel the pain anymore. As he's standing now, he cannot feel the pain pile anymore. Pile since 2015? Yes, sir. That's approximately six years. What happened? Apostle, he also had pile. You also had pile? For as long as he can, re he can remember. For as long as you can remember. Yeah. Was but he a growth or something? With excruciating pain. With pain. He couldn't sit. And but it's gone now, now. It's gone. What happened? It's gone. Apostle incessant blinking on his left eye for over a month. Right now, everything gone. What it's happened? Steady. He had something like a growth around his stomach, around the navel. A it growth was, around yes, your stomach? It was swollen. But right now... It was now, swollen? He couldn't touch it, but right now, it's gone. But the growth is gone now. What happened? He usually feels heat on his laps for over two years. Right now, he can't feel it anymore. Wow. Apostle, you see that we can do this thing very casually. Do you see that? Casually. You don't need to be apostolic. If you know these things, you can do it casually. Casually. You don't need to have a high service to make things happen. Casually. You can do this. Yes, what happened? So she came in here with migraine and weakness in the body since morning. It's but gone. right now, she's strong and it's gone. What happened? He had a pain on the right eye. Right, right now, eye. the pain is gone. It's gone. Wow. Stand up to your feet and lift your hands toward heaven. Let me pray with you. Apostle, pain in the ear since April. Since April. Yes, sir. Free. God bless you. Now, I want to pray for you this evening. I want to ask that um, what I have with God, for those of you that came for an encounter, I will give you. I know you've listened to my messages and the messages have set you on fire. I want to give you a token. He said, the things you have received from me, the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. I want to commit it to faithful men. But you see, before I pray this prayer for you, most of you need to rededicate your lives to God. Christianity has become a cliche and a religion. So there is a set of language that our generation have. So they talk dimensions, portals, transport, access, realities, and they talk it fast and loud. And then we think power is in quick talk and oratory is an error. So when I come to a place when people expect so much utterance, this is how I do it. And then number two, 
We are a generation of people that are preaching things that we don't practice. That's why we preach it so much, yet it doesn't reflect the life of men. I want to release something on a few people, but some of you need to rededicate yourselves. So if you feel that you need to rededicate yourself to the Lord, just come up, come to the front. Everything I'm doing tonight is void of emotion. You may be in sin, and you may not even be in sin, but you have departed from the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. One more minute. chest and pray this prayer with me quickly say Lord Jesus I come to you according to your word you say whoever comes to me I will know why it's cast away Lord I rededicate myself to you today and I ask that you revive me again and cause me to walk with you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Something will happen now. Please help him. Three of you will start weeping like, like children. You will start crying. You will start crying. Three people, that's, that's a sign. Three people will start crying like, like children. You won't know what's happening to you. They will start weeping. You know, cry is not something you can generate immediately or suddenly. That's what's coming on three of you. They will start weeping helplessly, helplessly. Helplessly. It's called brokenness. God is working on their inside so that he can walk through them. Ask them what happened. They don't know. <laughs> what we do is not an act. It's not a cliche. You know, sometimes when we are, we are charged, people assume that we are trying to manipulate people. They feel you are, ah, you are acting too much now. It's not about, that's the, that's the energy of God at that time. If you know it, you can sit down and be doing it. But these are the keys, encounters, sustaining hunger, and consciously building the power of God on your inside. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord preserve you in his kingdom. May the Lord cause that every one of you that have come out today will become the reason why many millions will come out before the Lord and commit their lives to Jesus. Beyond everything you have heard, beyond everything you have known, from today, come into intimacy with the Holy Spirit and begin to live in him with him, for him, 
and by him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the rest of you stretch your hands towards me. I'm seeing a young man. You are receiving a grace. It's the spirit of utterance. It's going to come upon you like a rushing wind. The spirit of utterance. Your tongue is about to be loosed by the spirit of God. And you begin to speak in tongues. Suddenly, you just start speaking in tongues now, uncontrollably. That's one of the things I have. As it's happening to that guy, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, everyone that desires utterance to communicate your counsel, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as I stretch hands over them now, take! It's called compelling power. People may not feel like it. You will make it happen. There's somebody that will begin to hear. Suddenly your heart is opening now. As I'm talking, messages will begin to download into your spirit. You will become a custodian of the oracles of God. You will not preach what you read. You will preach what you are told. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Men that are open to the frequencies of the heavens. Touch! Finally. There's a grace of speed about to come on someone. I know I've released that dimension before. But I see it again. I'm seeing a wind in the spirit. And the Holy Ghost tells me it's a, it's a, it's a grace for speed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The same dimension of speed I have enjoyed. I don't know why I'm seeing ladies. It seems this is coming on ladies. So many of you that will catch it are ladies. And there's a grace for marital settlement. It's a, it's, a, it's a grace that removes reproach. In the name of the Lord Jesus, take! Speed, speed, speed. That grace is coming again, stronger. Speed in the spirit. Touch! And I'm seeing somebody entering the realm of rest. Effortlessly. Effortlessly. You will, you will do many things at the same time. Many things at the same time. I sense the 
anointing of revival. The spirit of revival is about to come on someone. It will be so violent. Father, I just did that to someone, to someone the angels of revival. If I be a revivalist, Lord Jesus, I ask right now that you anoint and ordain such as carry that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus from the left to the right, from the front to the back to the overflow I open the portals of revival You were blessed by the message you just listened to and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior Kindly repeat this prayer after me Dear Heavenly Father I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on discipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.